the spare part. Hey, what's going on? It was just working. Hi there, Tom Thomas. Simka Nolik. Look, I've got a problem. Sorry, no time to play. We're busy. Busy? With what? We got put in charge here for the day. We even get to use one of the Pagamats. Papus and Masia went out to visit our Fixie friends. Papus used to be with them at the Space Center years ago. Ever since he was a boy, Papus dreamed of going into space. Then why not? Fixies work on rockets, too. He even got a job at the Astronaut Training Center. He was put in charge of the centrifuge, and he made sure it worked perfectly. The centrifuge is a sort of very fast carousel for training astronauts. And Papus trained inside of it, too. Unfortunately, Papus never knew the rocket was scheduled to fly on his day off. And when he found out, it was too late, and the rocket blasted off without him. Since then, Papus hates his days off. But he still longs to fix something like that centrifuge. You know, something turning around like a washing machine. Too bad for Papus that the one in his house seems to keep working perfectly fine. So that means today you fix everything? Uh-huh. Well then, it's your lucky day, because my car just broke down. Hooray! We've got work to do. Nolik, let's go! Well, what broke down here? Wait a sec. Here, this part burned out. It's all covered in black. I wonder where we can get the same part, but a clean one. A clean one? Hmm. <gasps> No, like, genius! There's the same exact part inside the dishwasher. We can take it from there. Come on! Do you have any idea how all these parts are connected to one another? With this thing right under you. It's a special part called a circuit board. A circuit board's made like this. First, the board gets covered with a thin layer of metal. Then, paths are laid onto the board where the electricity is going to flow. After that, all of the extra metal is washed off of it with a special cleaning liquid, leaving the metal paths that were drawn on the board. These paths work just like wires to connect the parts on the board to each other. And then all that's left to do is attach those parts to their places on the paths. Pull it! Uh, uh, Tadish! Tom Thomas! Tadish! Hooray! It works again! Tom Thomas, I'm about to start the dishwasher. Are there any dirty dishes in your room? Nah. Slow down! Slow what down? Slow down your mom. We took the new part out of the dishwasher, see? Mom, wait, don't start it. You need to put, put, yeah, put in this one uh, dirty cup. No, look, follow me. Inside the TV's the same part. Now back to the dishwasher. We barely made it. We grabbed the part from the TV in the living room. Not the TV. Uh, my mom's favorite program is about to start. <gasps> ah! <sighs> the television is working now. And where'd you get the part for it? From your dad's computer in his office. Hi, everybody. I'm home. Hi, hon. Are you ready for dinner? In a bit. I've got to finish a little work on the computer. Simka, hurry! Where else can we find that part? Stop. That's enough running. Here, take it back from the car. And then, we put the part back into the computer and it started working again. Oh, that was really silly. Remember, you little experts, never repair any device at the cost of another one. I understand now. And I understand. If you were smart, you could have taken the part out of the old radio in the closet. Papus, but you know the radio wouldn't work then. 
That old thing hasn't been working for years. Masya and I have pulled out half of those parts already. The short circuit. Are you sure we're allowed to play in your dad's office? We're not gonna play in here. We came here on a tour. I think this place is like a real museum. Mm -hmm. Just take a look at that. I have no idea what it is. And this thing is a complete mystery. <laughs> Keep it down, this is a museum, you know? <laughs> what a great museum guide you are. You know absolutely nothing. How can you say you don't know? I know. I'd like to run a test here, on the capacitor. On this one? Don't, don't touch. touch! Why can't I? It's not a museum. Because it's dangerous. If you touch it, the shock could be deadly. But you two are touching it all the time. I've seen it. The only time is when the device is turned off. And right now, the device is running. For many centuries, the Fixies only had to work on mechanical devices. But after the discovery of electricity, the Fixies had to master electrical devices as well. At first, Fixies were getting terrible shocks, and they really, really hurt. Over time, the Fixies figured out that you can't fix appliances when they are turned on, and bare wires should never, ever be touched. And Fixies also learned that electricity can travel not just through wires, but through plain old water. So that's why if a broken wire ever ends up in a puddle of water, you must never get close to it, or you could get a terrible shock. Fixies learn all these important rules, and they hope humans understand that they need to learn them as well. Look, now here's one I know about. It's an old radio my dad got for my grandpa. More than 60 years old, can you believe it? <gasps> Your grandpa? <laughs> the old radio. That was a joke. Is it still working? I don't know. Let's check. Electricity got turned off. Maybe it was a short circuit. I'll go find out. <sighs> oh, so it was you who caused the short circuit. I was in here showing all these things to Nolik, and we wanted to turn on on the radio. We flipped the switch on, and then suddenly, kaboom, the lights go off. They're off <sighs> everywhere in the apartment. So then how can I even warm up my pizza now? Soon it will warm up all by itself, now that the refrigerator isn't working. Simka, uh, what is that thing you said? A short circuit. <laughs> Electricity goes back and forth from an appliance with two separate wires. For example, an iron uses the electricity it needs to get hot. But if those two wires start touching each other without the iron in the middle, then the wires will get hot instead. And this can cause the wires to burn out. When this happens, it's called a short circuit. Short circuits can happen when the coating around a wire is worn out, or when an appliance is broken on the inside of it. So when you tried turning on that old broken radio, the wires in the apartment started burning. Does that mean all the wires got destroyed? Don't worry. In our apartment, there's an automatic switch to stop that. It turns off the electricity when the wires start getting too hot. Oof. And what about that, uh, uh, automatic switch? Is that something you need your mom and dad to turn on? No question. You definitely would. But you have us. Yeah! And we have Papus and Masia. I'll go tell them what happened here. And you guys, you turn off the radio. But we'll get electrocuted. What do you mean, electrocuted? Thanks to you, there's no electricity. Are you ready? Pull it up! Hooray! Tadish! So, Tom Thomas, what are we doing next? Hmm, why don't we continue with our tour? Hey, wait for me! I'm coming! Hey, wait, I thought you were fixing the telescope. 
television with Papus and Masia. They asked me to come here and stay with you on your awesome museum tour. That way, there'll be less for them to fix in here later. <laughs> Whipped cream. <laughs> Nolik, please stop your jumping. Your head's gonna fall off. Don't worry, it won't fall off. Mm hmm. That sounds good. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. Are you going somewhere, Tom Thomas? Me? Nowhere. Katya's coming over, so we can do our homework. I need some strawberries. Is she gonna bring the strawberries with her? You got it. And my job's to supply the whipped cream. They're so good together. Whipped cream? Do you have any? I'll go and check. Wait! from milk, and the milk you can get from a cow. And what about whipped cream? The cow jumps up and down like you, so the cream can get whipped up. Really? I'm joking, Nolik. I looked everywhere. We've got regular cream, but there isn't whipped cream. No problem. We can whip some up right now. Cream is thick milk with a lot of fat. If you want to make whipped cream, you need to cool down the cream, add some sugar, and then beat this mixture very well. This adds tiny air bubbles that turn the cream into a delicious white fluffy foam. But it's important not to overdo it. Or instead of getting fluffy, the cream will start getting thicker and thicker until it turns into rich, creamy butter. How are we gonna whip it up? Look, there's a whisk. No! Hold on! How's that? It's not working. Maybe we need to use a different bowl or something. Do you think that a bottle would work? Hmm, that's a really good idea. Now I don't have to worry about spilling this cream anymore. Shake it with both hands. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Shake it harder, Tom Thomas! That's all. I'm just too tired. The cream looks exactly the same as when you started. You didn't try hard enough. Oh, really? Then try whipping it yourself. I got it! That's who's gonna help us. Chusaka? Yeah, awesome! Bring it down! A little more! Perfect! Open it up! Chusaka, Chusaka, Yeah? But why can't you? What a shame. It's fine. Come on over anyway. Oh, you can't reach us. You can't reach us. Whew. I'm so tired. I'm sure that at least we got the cream whipped up. Oh, see that, Zuka? There's no cream left. Just some yellow stuff. It's butter, I'm sure. We overdid it. People make so many different things out of milk, like cream or butter or frosting for cakes and cupcakes. With dry milk, sugar, and boiling water, you can make condensed milk. And if you make it cold, brr, you get ice cream. And if the milk gets sour, no problem. Humans make all sorts of foods out of sour milk, like yogurt, sour cream, kefir, and buttermilk. If you drain off the extra liquid from sour milk, you'll have cottage cheese. And by boiling milk a special way, you can make all sorts of different cheeses. There are so many kinds of cheeses made throughout the world that it's hard to even count them all. And even certain kinds of chocolate can't be made without milk. 
You must agree that plain old ordinary milk is just one super magical extraordinary thing. It's just awful, guys. What, Katya's not coming over? She's coming over, just without the strawberries. She didn't know that her grandmother had already used up all of them to make some jam. So you're telling us that we don't need any whipped cream? Right. Katya's bringing a cake. And she said that we'll need butter. She wants to make frosting out of it. Butter? I don't know if we have any. We got plenty. The robot. Did I already tell you what I'm hoping you'll get me for my birthday present? <laughs> yes, honey. Only a thousand times or so. A robotozoid R300 would just be the greatest. With Mega Vision, I want it. I really do. <sighs> I do. Well, tomorrow you'll find out. But now it's time to sleep, Tom Thomas. Wow, that is one great present. And we got Tom Thomas absolutely zero for his birthday. Ah, uh, we're just terrible friends. So, how does this robot work? Okay, so let's give this a try, shall we? First, we'll take a walk. And how does he have any idea where the robot's going? I can tell you. One of the robot's eyes is a video camera. The robot sends the picture to the screen on the controller so the player can see where the robot is going. Yeah! And that's just one thing they know how to do. A robot is a smart machine that can do very difficult or dangerous work for humans. With its strong metal arms, a robot can move heavy objects or put together parts to build cars and other machines. Robots are often sent into outer space or to the bottom of the ocean to help scientists. There are also robots that can understand what people are saying. And robots that can talk and even make jokes, just like people. I've got it. Now let's turn you around. Uh, what was that? Uh, look, you know... <gasps> he destroyed him! Nola, stop! You were playing with that, right? You think Tom will notice? Oh, I know what you're doing all night. I'm off to bed. I'll get him to work. I'll stay up until I do. Simka, let's try and... No, we're gonna need some help. birthday to you, Tom Thomas. I'm sorry, Tom Thomas. Last night, your robot, you know, I broke it. Dad, it works perfectly. Don't you see? 
I'm so proud of you. You fixed it. <laughs> I couldn't fix it at all. I tried everything. Oh, you want to tell me that the robot fixed itself? <laughs> what a joker. <laughs> Mom, Dad, thanks so much. I love it. And how about thanking us? I should have known it was you who fixed the robot. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! The thermometer. I can't believe the new thermometer isn't working. Tom Thomas, stay in bed. And I'll try and look for that old mercury thermometer. Hey, did you get sick? That's one way of saying it. I don't know how I'm going to pass that math test today. You're not ready, so you don't want to go to school. Well, yeah. So if you pull a sickie, then you can trick your mom. No, that's not true. I'm just pretending a little bit. You think so? Well, you won't trick the thermometer. Simka, what's a mercury thermometer? <laughs> mercury is a type of liquid metal that's silver in color. There's no mercury inside of new thermometers. Now they're electronic. Old thermometers were made with a glass tube with markings and a bit of mercury inside them. When the end of the tube warms up, the mercury inside of it expands and creeps up the tube. And that's how those old thermometers measure temperature. The longer the column of mercury, the higher the person's temperature is. That means I need to warm up the end of the thermometer. Tom Thomas, you're a genius! But how will you warm it up? Finally, I found it. Well, let's see. Mom, can I eat something? <coughs> Hang in there, sweetie. I'll make you something. Ooh, that is hot. Now there's just no way it won't have a temperature. Hey, what are you doing in here? Well, how high did you get it? 108 is what it's showing. Oh, no. With a temperature that high, they'll send you straight to the hospital. And you don't need that. You'd better shake that thermometer. Yeah, that's what I'll do. That'll get the temperature down a little. Ah! Well, so much for that. Cheaters never prosper. Tom Thomas, did you see this? Nola, don't touch the mercury. It's poisonous. Stop it right now. And you, Tom Thomas, you don't touch that mercury either. It's dangerous. Then how can we throw it out? Call your mom and she can help you. I can't. How could I call her? Then she'd find out that I wanted to trick her. Maybe it's better to tell the truth. I can't. I can't do it. All right, then. It looks like there's no other choice. Nolik, call Papus and Masia. I'll get him. And you go back to your room and wait. Looks like this whole job is done. Not yet. We still need to neutralize this mercury. In everybody's home, there's all sorts of chemicals around. They are used for cleaning dishes, clothes, the bathroom, and dealing with pests. And all of these substances can be very harmful to human health. But some people don't seem to understand this. They might use a dangerous spray or a poisonous liquid and then forget to wash their hands afterward. And then they go and eat or rub their eyes with their hands. That can cause serious damage to their vision or stomachs. Ugh. And never put anything into your mouth that looks like medicine, unless your parents or a doctor gave it to you. And if you ever happen to find something on the ground that looks like a piece of candy, you must never put it in your mouth. You can get poisoned that way. Oh, humans. If they'd only remember this simple advice, they'd stay safer. 
And what do we do with the glass that's broken? That job's not for fixies. Hmm. Tom Thomas, we cleaned up all the mercury. And the glass, too? No, not the broken glass. But will you? Pabu said that it's not our job. He told us you have to get your parents to come and help you. That part's your responsibility. Here's some food for you. What's the matter? Hmm? Mom, I... I broke the thermometer. Broke it? Did you cut yourself? No. The mercury, did you touch it? I didn't. Simka, you think you'll tell her the truth? And where did you break it? The bathroom. Why did you go in there? I wanted... I wanted to trick you. I have a test, and I didn't study for it. And now it's too late for school, hmm? The compass. Pipe ball, hands on the deck. Aye, aye, mateys. Shiver me timbers. Simka Nolik, what you doing here? We're not Simka Nolik. We're courageous pirates. Yeah, pirates. And today we leave home for the sea. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Hooray! You mean, no? No hooray? Oh, yeah! You can't join us without a test. Go and find a special thing. Something no sailor should ever sail the sea without. I can do it, but how? With a map. And it's over there. <laughs> I've never seen a map that's this puny. What are you talking about, puny? That took us a half hour to make. From where you're standing now. Uh-huh. From here, you mean. I guessed it right. First head to the north until you will find... Hold on. But where's the north? It's where the North Pole. Ice and polar bears are. But how do I know which direction the North Pole is? By compass, of course. A compass is a special tool that helps sailors and pilots know in which direction they're traveling, whether in the air or on the sea. Our planet is like a big magnet that has two poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. These magnetic poles help the needle in the compass find its way. The needle is magnetized, so one of its ends will be attracted to the North Magnetic Pole and point at it, while the other end will always point towards the South. That I know, but there's no compass around here. Then let's make one by ourselves. Out of what? We can use a needle. We just have to magnetize it. And how's it supposed to turn around? In a saucer of water. pointing in the direction of north and the other to the south. But which point's where? Well, there's the window, so that can't be the right way. The north is there. I'm really liking this sharp little fella we've got here. You calling me a little fella? No, it's just the way us pirates talk. All right then, north we go. First head to the north until you see a sleeping monster. Ladies ahoy, monster on the horizon. Let him do it himself. He, hmm. Now turn to the left and go 300 paces more. 300? Exactly, I counted on myself. Uh-huh. Okay, then that means I'll go one, two, three. Now straight ahead until you get right up to the giant tree. <laughs> you call that a tree? Wow, amazing! I can't believe my eyes, it's a real ship compass. It's also called a marine compass. The first compass was invented more than a thousand years ago in ancient China. 
With its help, the Chinese were able to travel across the desert. And about 200 years later, the compass appeared in Europe. Whether the Europeans came up with the idea for the compass themselves or took it from the Chinese isn't clear. But one thing's for sure, we fixies remember how those early compasses were built. The first compasses were made with a magnetized needle on top of a floater inside a bowl of water. Later, the needle was put on top of a pin that let it spin freely, and it started to look like the ones we use today. Since the needle of a compass always points to the north, a sailor can easily figure out which direction he needs to turn his ship. If he wants to go north, he follows the needle north. If he wants to go south, he goes in the opposite direction. Your dad brought it home with him late last night from his work. You were asleep. Hold on. I want to check something. What's up? Yeah, they line up together. Of course they line up. If not, how else would you have gotten here? We're done with the needle. It has to go back. First head south, 600 paces. Six for you, matey. The ship in a bottle. Simka, Nolik, here, take a look at this. Oh, wow! Awesome! Where did you get this from? From one of the shelves in Dad's office. He's got lots of cool stuff in there. That's cool! I'll be the captain! This is like a totally real sailing ship with masts, cordage, and everything. And how can it all get in there through such a little hole? A ship in a bottle is a real miracle. Do you want me to tell you the secret of how it gets inside? It's like so. All of the ship's masts are collapsible. Before the boat is put into the bottle, the masts are folded down and pressed against the ship's body so it's small enough to fit through the bottle's neck. And once the ship is inside the bottle, the masts and sails are opened back up by pulling on a thread. I'm an octopus, huh? Oh, look out! Brave sailors like us! We're not afraid of storms! Tom Thomas, be careful! Hey! Oh, ah! Did it break? No, it's all Tadish! It's not close to Tadish! Take a look how this mask broke! Whoa! Uh, what have I done? Don't worry, we can fix it! Get some glue, okay? Here's some super glue I found. This is the kind that'll keep things stuck forever. No, Lake! Come and help! Phew! Phew! This stuff is so stinky! Danish! Ooh. That's better, thank you, guys. We sailors ugh, never let a friend down. No, Lake! You gotta get out! You'll get sick from that stinky air! I can't get loose! I... I got stuck. Hello there, Tom Thomas. Uh, what are you doing with the ship from my collection in here? I just... wanted to give it some air. Tom Thomas, you know that taking things out of my office is just not allowed. <laughs> hey, look! What an interesting cabin boy! I never noticed him before. I'll take it, Dad, and put it back on the shelf, okay? <laughs> Who just sneezed? Uh, I did. Achoo! Well, all right then. Do your homework and please don't set foot in my office again. Simka, where are you going? To save Nolik! I'll come with you. You're not allowed inside that office. Your father said no. Sweetheart, your soup's getting cold. I'm coming. Nolik! Where are you? Simka, why is everything turning? Because you inhaled the fumes from that stinky glue. Ah, oh, phew! Everybody knows how strong the smell of paints, cleaning fluids, and glues can be. But the nasty smell is not where the real danger lies. Breathing in the fumes from paint or glue can give you a terrible headache. Or even worse, it can make you faint. 
And that's why when the Fixies need to paint or glue something, they're supposed to put on a safety mask called a respirator. And humans need to remember to wear masks just like Fixies when they're working with fumes. And never forget that the fumes from glue and paint can be flammable. It only takes one spark and kaboom, there can be an explosion. So always remember to have plenty of clean air moving through any room where you are gluing or painting anything. Simka, hurry up. Ugh. Hang in there, Nolik. I'll get you out of there. <laughs> Is he okay? No, like... No! Let's see, three times 648. He won't get it himself. Nope. Well, I bet he will. Tom Thomas is so smart. Yeah, smart, but lazy. I'll bet you a flick in the head. Then get ready. Huh? Shh. We promise we can't bother him during homework time. I really wish I didn't have to write this out. Why write everything on paper when you got a calculator? I knew he'd say that. Without a calculator, he can't get it. It seems like the batteries are dead. Did you see that? The calculator won't turn on, so he's gonna have to solve it by himself. What's the problem? Come on, where are the batteries here? <laughs> Suka, no, look. Just come out already. I can hear that you're here. Hi, Tom Thomas. Well, you can't figure out where the batteries need to go? <laughs> I don't get what's so funny. Because there are no batteries inside of this thing. What do you mean, no? Then where does the calculator, you know, get a... Where does it get electricity? Uh-huh. There's a solar battery in there. The sun turns it on? A long time ago, it was discovered by scientists that some materials produce electricity when light hits them. Sheets that are made out of these materials are called photoelectric cells. By connecting a few of these photoelectric cells together, you can build a solar battery. A solar battery in a calculator sits behind a small clear window. And when light hits the solar battery, it produces the electricity that powers the calculator. I don't see a little window anywhere on here. That's because you covered up the window with a sticker for some reason. The reason is that it looks great. Good job. It looks really great, but it can't work now. Well, farewell, sticker. I can't get it off. Then just leave it alone. Go ahead and solve the problems without the calculator. Then I'll be the one flicking you. Flicking who? Did you forget? We're the Fixies, and we have to fix everything. Ah, oh, Simka, that's a sneaky plan. It's not sneaky at all. You better find something to tear off the sticker with. Okay, how about them? take forever doing it this way. Yeah. I got an idea. Let's use this paper clip. And what's next? I'll just stick the end to the paper clip and then wrap it around. Tish! With the help of solar batteries, we can produce electricity without burning any oil or coal. 
Unfortunately, these batteries aren't very powerful. A calculator can get enough energy from a small little battery. But in order to power a whole city with solar energy, you need to have power plants with huge fields full of solar batteries. And of course, it's best to build these plants where the sun shines bright and long, like out in the desert. By the way, in outer space, the sun shines very brightly, and it's never blocked by clouds. That's why all of the vehicles and satellites in space use solar energy for power, including the International Space Station, where astronauts from different countries work together. Tom Thomas! What, you guys all done? Uh-huh. Now you can go solve your problems on the calculator. But I already solved them on paper before you peeled off the sticker. Hooray! I'm the winner! Ow! That's totally unfair. If it wasn't for the sticker, you would have lost. What's going on? Nothing. Never mind. That's nothing to you? Well done, Tom Thomas. You got them all right. Now it's working. Look, a picture of our Nolik. Where? Where? Right there on the calculator. Oh, I got it. Zero means no, Nolik. <laughs> Good one. The string lights. We're almost all done. Yeah. Now Santa Claus is gonna come over. He'll say, one, two, three, lights light up the tree. Then we'll get our presents. The real Santa Claus? Yeah, for sure. The real Santa Claus will come to you? You'll see for yourself. He comes to me every year. Okay, so let's practice. One, two, two three, three, lights light up the tree. Huh? Oh, the string lights burned out, and we don't have another one. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is almost here. Is the tree ready? No, not quite yet. Oh no, oh no, what are we gonna do? I'll be right back. Tom Thomas, what do you think? Will Santa Claus give you any presents if there aren't any lights on the tree? No way, it's not right without the light. It just wouldn't be magical. Papus, Masia. Santa Claus is about to come to Tom Thomas, but the string lights on the tree, they all burned out. They all burned out? Really? The bulbs in a string light are connected together like a chain with a piece of wire between each bulb. When you turn on a string light, electricity flows through the wire, lighting up each of the bulbs along its way. But if any of the bulbs gets burned out, the circuit will be broken and the electricity will stop flowing. That means one bad bulb will make all of the lights go out. So if you want to fix a string light with a bad bulb, the answer is really simple. Just find the bad one and put a new one in. So do we have a spare bulb around here? I'll get it for you. I know where it is. Tom Thomas, hold up Santa Claus for a while. We need a little time to find and replace that bad light for you. I'll try to. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is already here. Ho, ho, ho! I got one thing to do. So, let's find the bad bulb. Okay, Papoose, let's go. Hmm, this one's working. Maybe this one burned out. Nope. And that? If light's fine. Santa Claus is getting very hot out here. Hold on. Simka, what's up? We checked all the bulbs, but couldn't find a bad one. Huh. I guess this year won't be magical. Okay, Mom, just come on in. Ho, ho, ho. Hello there, Tom Thomas. So tell me now, have you been good all year? Huh, why aren't the lights on the tree burning? So then let's say it together. One, two, three! Ow! Papoose! I found one more bulb! Here's the one that's not working. One, one two, two, three! three. Lights light, light up, up the, the tree. tree! Huh! 
Now we need to replace this bulb with a new one. So where's Masia? Show your light, O oh tree. Hooray! Hooray! Ho, 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 ho. Ooh, that was really hard. I see you already got it shining. But where did you manage to find a new bulb? We got Papus to act as the bulb. <gasps> Tidish! Tidish! Ah, uh, what a hero. Pull me up so we can put this bulb in. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. Our spirits light up. Whoa! And on the tree. <laughs> yeah! And on the tree. On Christmas ah, Eve. Nice box. The lights burn brighter. Mm -hmm. Every year when no one is expecting. From some place that no one could conceive. Appears a little miracle before us. Every year on Christmas Eve. 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 The clock it seems. On Christmas Eve. It's taking slower. And suddenly, on Christmas Eve, a miracle, on Christmas Eve, no one believes, on Christmas Eve, comes out of nowhere. Every year when no one is expecting, from some place that no one could conceive, yeah. a little miracle before Whoa. us. Every year on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Eve, the clock ticks slower. The Magnet. Well, it looks like we need a pack of that. Hmm, where did this screw come from? another look in the kitchen. But we already looked in there. We'll look better this time. Let's go take a look in there. We looked so many times already. Simka Nolik, what do you keep searching for in here? It's not a what, it's a who. Our papoose is missing. We've been looking for him everywhere. Oh, no. He's probably already turned into a screw. Because huh? he doesn't have enough energy. Maybe I could help. Surely. Let's start with you picking us up. We're just exhausted from running. In a dangerous situation, a fixie can choose to turn into a screw. But sometimes it happens all by itself. For example, when a fixie doesn't have enough energy. When this happens, the fixie grows weak, gets sluggish, and then goes into hibernation, turning into a screw. This bad luck happens when a fixie doesn't get charged up from being inside of a device. That's why fixies always work inside of machines, so they can stay charged up with energy. Sometimes a fixie that has grown weak and turned into a screw can get lucky. If a human happens to find him and screws him into an appliance, then the fixie will be able to get energized and come back to life. Then he'll unscrew himself and run away, leaving the human wondering, where did that screw go? I know I screwed it in. So, where should we look first? What are you looking for in here, Tom Thomas? Well, um... And what do you have there in your hand? Well, uh, just some screws of mine. Ah, I just found a screw not too long ago. Maybe it's one of yours. Probably. Where is it now? Here, take it, and don't leave them lying around. 
Should I turn myself around now so your papoose can turn back into himself? He's been lying in there for a week already. He doesn't have the energy to turn back into himself. Then what's next? We have to screw him into some device, you know, so he will get his energy back. Okay, but which one's Papus? All of these screws in here look like Papus. We'll use a magnet. How come? All the screws will just get lifted up together. First of all, not every... Not every kind of metal is attracted by a magnet. It's an easy thing to see for yourself. Just get a magnet. You probably have one in your house on the refrigerator. Try moving it close to different metal objects you have around the house like a spoon or nails or coins. You'll notice that some of the metal objects are pulled very strongly by the magnet, while some of the metals are pulled a bit less. And then there will be some metal things that aren't attracted to the magnet at all. Got it. And the second thing? Well, the second thing. We fixes aren't attracted to that magnet one bit when we turn into screws. Let's give it a try. Here, I found him. And now we'll screw him in. I wonder, are there any other fixies in here? We're not enough for you or something? Not at all, I just wonder. Nothing. Oh, and the screw went away. How about that? He already got charged up and unscrewed himself. Why don't you take a little rest? After such a big adventure. No thanks, I've had plenty of rest. Anyway, it's something I've wanted to do for a very long time already. The hair dryer. Nolik, are you here? Yep, I'm here. I got a cool trick to show you. What? Oh. No, that's not the trick. It's a trick with helium. Oh, uh, what is helium? Well, helium's a very light gas they fill balloons with, so they float in the air. That's not magic at all, you silly. Who's never watched a flying balloon? The trick's not about the balloon flying. I need to get its gas. Ugh. How can I get it down from there? Get a hair dryer. That's the way to do it. Yeah, what for? So I can show you a trick. All right. Mom, can I use a hair dryer for a minute? A hair dryer is a great simple invention. Inside a hair dryer is a fan that sucks in the air from behind it and pushes it out the front to blow your hair around and make it dry. To heat up the air, there's an electric coil inside of there. When the coil heats up, it warms up the passing air. And the hot air helps your hair dry faster. Of course, you don't have to turn on the heat setting, but then you better like that cold wind. Nolik. I'm right here. Here's the dryer. I want to see your trick. All right. Flip the switch. Now you lay the ball right into the airstream. Oh, great. The ball's flying. And now it's my turn to fly. Really? Whoa! Yeah! I'll shoot right up to the ceiling so I can grab the string and pull the balloon down. So turn off the heat and away I go. Probably because you're little and weigh like nothing. And what? Do I have to wait till I'm heavier and older to get down? I don't know. Then you'd better get my sister. She'll tell us what to do. Simka, come on out. Well, what's going on? Look. Hi there. How'd you end up on the ceiling? I was just showing off that funny hair dryer trick. I'm laughing out loud. Ha, ha, ha. I can try flipping on the hairdryer and lifting you up to Nolik. 
So both of us can get caught hanging up there? Well, thanks, but I don't need it. Then what do you need? Just a broom or a mop. You know how to do a trick with a mop? Uh-huh. Just make it fast. They can be quite ingenious creatures, those humans. Sometimes they figure out clever ways to use ordinary devices, like a hair dryer. Of course it can be used to dry hair, but it can also be used to dry a wet spot on clothes. And a hair dryer can even be used to remove a sticky price label. Now suppose you buy yourself a new cup that has a terribly sticky sticker that just seems impossible to peel off. Well, try warming it up with a hair dryer. The glue will dry up a bit and the label will come off easier. There's no doubt that a hair dryer can be very useful in any household. But you need to be extremely careful with it, especially in the bathroom. If water gets inside a hair dryer, there's a real risk of getting a horrible electrical shock that can seriously hurt you and destroy the hair dryer as well. The helium stops working after just a couple seconds. <laughs> That's good. Because such a humongous fixie couldn't fit inside any machine. <laughs> the aquarium. The coast is clear. The humans have left. Come on, let's go. Masia, why are the fish looking so tired? Because they're not getting enough air in there. The water in the aquarium is dirty and it needs air, but the filter isn't working. The filter? Yes, that device over there. These fish need our help, and if we don't do something right now, they could die. Right. First, I'll fix that light while you and Masia go over there and see what is wrong with the filter. But I want to go and look at the filter, too. You're too small for this. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you're a giant. I mean, you're like six feet tall, huh? That's enough arguing. Nolik, let's go. Well, let's check it. Not working. Nolik, where are you? I'm up here. What are you doing up there? Nothing. Holding on. We don't have time for that. Get down. We have to get this switch working. <laughs> Marcia, what's the matter with the filter? Well, probably something's caught inside and it's stopping the motor from turning. A filter is used to keep the aquarium water clean. A motor in a filter turns the paddles and pumps water through a fine net or a sponge. The dirt in the water gets trapped in there and the cleaned water is put back into the aquarium. Many filters not only clean the water, but also add air to it, so there will be more oxygen in the water. You see, even though fish live their lives in water, they need oxygen just like all of us.
There are lots of ways for people to breathe underwater. As an experiment, try putting an empty glass upside down in water, and you'll see that some of the air stays in there. That's the idea behind the ancient diving bell. An empty bell was lowered under the water, and some of the air remained in there for the diver to breathe. And about 200 years ago, the first diving suits were invented. The diver got air from a hose that started above the water. This let the diver spend a long time under the water, and even walk around on the bottom, but just not too far. Later on, people learned to squeeze a lot of air inside of metal tanks, and that's when scuba diving started. Scuba divers breathe the air stored in these tanks, so they can swim freely, and even dive deep down below the water. Our work is done. The light is on, and the filter is working. And the fish look so exciting! As if they're not fish, but monsters. Thank goodness they're behind glass. <gasps> Papus! Just hang on! We'll be right there to save you! <sighs> but I don't even have my pack mat Ooh, look how they're chopping their teeth. They must be so hungry. You're right, they're hungry. Nolik, come on! <laughs> Those fish, they're so ungrateful. We went ahead and fixed their filter, and all they wanted to do was gobble us up. And I'm the one who saved you from them. I was the one watching what was going on. <gasps> oh, gee. Hold it. Do you think giving her some uh, food will help? As long as you're not thinking that food is me. Whoa! 